tonight's Project Earth report, we take a closer look at how the extreme weather can breed a potentially lethal fungus. It lurks in the dust. Elizabeth Cook heard from a California expert and her students racing to shed new light on this quickly spreading pathogen. On a stretch of land in Kern County, Dr. Antia Lauer puts on a mask and then carefully cracks open the earth. So if we dig, let's say about five to seven centimeters down. For more than 15 years, the microbiologist has collected and studied soil samples. Her goal, to shed new light on an old but growing threat, a fungus found in dirt. Yeah, we should be concerned. When inhaled, the fungus can be dangerous, even deadly. It causes an infection, usually in the lungs, known as valley fever. While most recover, it can be tough to treat. You need to know if you get it, then uh, the medicine has side effects and um, you might never get rid of it. Take a little bit. The pathogen is known to dwell in the soils of the southern San Joaquin Valley. Most infections traditionally occur here. But in the past 20 years, the number of reported cases in California have surged fivefold. The largest increases are further north in places like the Central Coast and the South Coast, from Ventura to the Mexican border. All Bay Area counties report an increase in cases. Where the fungus thrives... You cannot protect yourself 100%, even if you try. It's impossible. So you need to be educated about what the risks are. The risks are spreading in part due to climate change and extreme weather. A prolonged drought turns the fungus into spores that lie dormant in parched soil. Heavy rains following a drought fuel a rapid fungal growth. Add to that urban sprawl, off-road recreation, dust storms, wildfires, and renewable energy construction sites. All disturb the soil and can put dust containing spores into the air where they can travel and be inhaled. They can be up in the air like within seconds. So these are first results. Dr. Lauer teaches sentence. environmental microbiology so and directs a research program at Cal State Bakersfield. Harmandeep Saran is one of her students. We collect samples, soil samples or dust samples. The students are studying the pathogen's DNA to investigate what species of valley fever fungus is present in the different soils and dust they've collected. Their work aims to reveal where the pathogen is traveling and what areas are at highest risk. It's not comforting <laughs> knowing that it is spreading. Shedding any light on the pathogen may one day lead to better tolerated treatments. It's probably been the worst medication than I've ever been on. Araceli Figueroa had valley fever for a year and a half. She needed an antifungal treatment, which was horrible. My hair would fall out in chunks. I would take a shower, it'd fall out. And I just remember my mouth hurting all the time. It would burn, um, the headaches, the nausea. The Central Valley biologist studies wild animal habitats. At first, she thought she had the flu. Her doctors thought it was asthma, then tuberculosis. Araceli demanded a test for valley fever. It confirmed the diagnosis. The delay left her with a damaged lung. My biggest advice is to educate yourself as much as possible. Dr. Lauer agrees. She warns with our warming climate, funguses are like superbugs. They'll evolve and survive. So they will have no problem to adapt to any climate change. The question, will we ever catch up? So the most common symptoms, fatigue, dry cough, and a fever. It is not contagious, and here's some good advice from Dr. Lauer. If you travel I-5, keep your windows rolled up, set your AC to recirculation so it cuts off any outside air. Good to know.